Hello, I'm Dr. Eric Cole with the SANS Institute. And one topic that gets brought up a lot over the last year is full disk encryption of your data. And what amazes me about that is if you ask any company, were they even thinking about full disk encryption two or three years ago, hardly anybody says yes. And the reason was with a lot of these laptops getting stolen, the key thing you want to make sure if you're going to deploy a solution is that it's truly addressing the risk that you feel you have. One thing that I always bring up is you have the situation where the laptops were stolen from the VA and you had a large financial institution where one of their senior VPs had a laptop in a hotel room with over 70,000 client records on it, including personal identifiable information, and it was stolen out of the hotel room. And right after that, the company immediately said, full disk encryption. However, I step back for a second, scratch my head and say, wait a second. The real question you should have asked is, what in the world was somebody doing with 70,000 records on their system? It's really an access control issue. So while full disk encryption helps a little, the other problem you have to remember with full disk encryption is, what unlocks your data? Well, the key is stored in a virtual safe, and your password is the combination for that virtual safe. So if you don't have strong password policy, and somebody can crack your password, the game's over. So one thing I always urge companies, if you're going to move to full disk encryption, you first need to have a robust password policy or move to two-factor authentication because that provides the key or the combination to the virtual safe that protects your data. The other thing you have to remember is full disk encryption encrypts everything on your hard drive. So if you leave your terminal unlocked and walk away, and somebody can walk up to an unlocked terminal, full disk encryption is not going to help you because the computer's already unlocked and they're going to get access to your data. The other problem with full disk encryption is if somebody gets access or even you copy data from the hard drive to a USB drive or a file server, the data traditionally gets copied unencrypted. So I'm not trying to bash full disk encryption. It has its place in your security arsenal that if laptops get stolen when they're turned off, full disk encryption will make sure that information is properly protected. However, we just wanted to make you aware of some of the negative issues. One of the other things you have to realize is, while full disk encryption takes advantage and solves the confidentiality problem, it doesn't solve the availability problem. If you don't have a backup of that data, or that hard drive is an older hard drive and it crashes, your data is gone. So you want to make sure that you have some way to be able to recover the key and recover your data in a store manner so if it gets stolen or your hard drive dies, you'll still be able to protect your data. The other alternative you want to look at is what we call file or folder level encryption. What this does is, this doesn't encrypt your entire hard drive, it encrypts particular folders or files. What I like about this is, it requires more discipline on the user, because if the user is accessing sensitive data and saves it to the desktop or a different area that's not protected, your information is going to be exposed. But if they have discipline and they always write to certain files or folders, now what happens is each one can be encrypted with different keys. So now you can actually accomplish RBAC or role-based access control using file or folder level encryption because you could have seven or eight different folders or subfolders and you only give certain people the key so they can only access the data where they have the key or the information. This can be thought of like you would in your house. You might go in and give family members or relatives or friends a key to your front door but you might have your bedroom or some closets that are locked with a different key that only you or your spouse have access to, so now you can limit or control what area they can get access to. The other nice thing about file or folder level is if you encrypt that entire folder or file, now when you copy it to USB or you copy it to a file server, it stays encrypted. 
So now that really lets you take R back, not only at a local computer level, but you can implement it across your entire network by controlling who has access to the keys across your network. I hope you found this helpful and we want to give you a little insight into some of the pros and cons of full disk and file level encryption. For more details, you can take Security Essentials or one of the many other SANS courses that are available where you can find out details at www.sans.org. And I look forward to seeing you at a future class. Thank you.